This is a description of the dual incision technique with surgical navigation for hip replacement with the patient in a lateral position aligned approximately from the ASIS to lateral port order of the patella is utilized to guide the skin incision. The skin incision is made anterior or lateral to this line, approximately two to three finger breaths, such that it lies over the bulk of the tensor fasciolata muscle. The dissection is carried down to the level of the fascia. With blunt finger dissection, the medial border of the tensor fasciolata muscle is identified. This interval is the Smith-Peterson interval. With blunt dissection, the finger could be brought down to the femoral head and neck, and with rotation of the leg, placement of the finger on the hip joint capsule is confirmed. Retractors are then placed, one beneath the tensor fasciolata muscle, retracting it laterally, placing the retractor over the superior aspect of the uh, hip joint capsule and femoral neck, Another retractor placed inframedially along the inferior femoral neck. At this point, the recurrent branches of the uh, circumflex uh, vessels near the uh, inferior neck margin must be identified and coagulated to prevent postoperative hematoma. At this point, either a hip capsulotomy or capsulectomy can be performed. My preference is to do a partial anterior capsulectomy and in most instances do an inferior capsular release capsulotomy to gain hip motion. Retractors are then placed immediately adjacent to the neck superiorly and inferiorly with an additional retractor being placed laterally to protect the tensor fasciolata muscle. At this point when navigating the hip Further landmarks such as the trochanteric fossa can be digitized. At this point, a double cut osteotomy is performed to remove a wedge of the femoral neck to allow easier extraction of the femoral head for visualization of the acetabulum. Meticulous attention to hemostasis throughout the procedure is important to avoid postoperative hematoma. With the double cot osteotomy made, an osteotome is utilized to help remove the wedge of the femoral neck, and a corkscrew device is utilized to place into the femoral head. Occasionally, pre drilling of the femoral head is necessary. Utilizing a hip skid device, the femoral head is levered out of the acetabulum, again taking care to protect the anterior musculature as seen here, the tensor fasciolata muscle. With the femoral head removed, the hip is placed in a bolster to place some slight abduction to the leg, again with the patient in the lateral position. This removes tension on the fasciolata muscle. If there is any tension on the skin edges, skin incision length is not crucial. It's most important to relieve tension on the skin to avoid any wound healing problems. With a bipolar sealer device, the fovea is adequately coagulated to prevent further bleeding. Again, with the use of surgical navigation, the fovea is digitized, as is the acetabular rim. This will help guide placement of the acetabular reamers and the acetabular component to avoid malpositioning. This will also give the surgeon a reference point of the patient's native acetabular abduction and aniversion position.
to avoid soft tissue damage, the acetabular reamers are placed by hand into the acetabulum, and then the navigated reamer handle is attached to the reamer head in situ in the wound. With the navigation tracker in place, the center of the hip joint is identified. This will allow reference to avoid over-reaming or eccentric reaming of the acetabulum during preparation. During acetabular preparation, real-time feedback as to medialization of the cup, placement of the cup, and positioning of the reamer is seen through the surgical navigation screen. The acetabulum is then prepared in the usual fashion. The final position of the acetabular reamer can be recorded to confirm satisfactory reproduction of this with the actual acetabular implant. Once again, soft tissues from the margin of the acetabulum need to be removed to prevent infolding or impingement and malseating of the acetabular component. The acetabular component is placed by hand within the wound and then a curved navigated acetabular inserter is attached to the cup for final impaction. Once again, final position of the acetabular component is confirmed with real-time feedback from surgical navigation screen and the final position is held, the cup is impacted in the place, and additional screws, if preferred, can be placed at this time. After taking care to clear all the soft tissues from the margin of the acetabular socket, the insert is then placed and impacted into position. Once the acetabular liner is satisfactorily impacted, tension is then to be turned to preparation of the femoral component. With the patient's leg in the figure four position, a percutaneous puncture is made to sound the proximal femoral canal. Palpation through the anterior wound by the surgeon allows confirmation of appropriate percutaneous placement of the starting reamer in the femoral canal. Femoral reaming and preparation is performed as would be standard with femoral rod placement. A lateralizing reamer is utilized to confirm satisfactory lateralization of the trochanter. Broaching is then performed, again, with constant visualization and palpation through the anterior wound to confirm appropriate placement of the broach and depth of seating. The edge of the acetabular broach is palpated anteriorly to confirm placement flush with the calcar osteotomy. The computer navigation confirms placement of the broach in varus valgus flexion extension and antiversion, and then final confirmation of appropriate sizing and fit and fill of the canal is performed with a single shot fluoroscopic view intraoperatively in all cases. Once navigation and fluoroscopy have confirmed satisfactory positioning and fit and fill of the canal with the broach, the real implant is impacted into position. The anterior wound is utilized to confirm satisfactory seating of the prosthesis, and this is also confirmed with navigation. Once satisfactory placement of the real femoral component is performed, a trial reduction with a trial head is performed to confirm leg length and offset and stability.
The real head is then placed onto the cleaned and dried trunnion and impacted into position. Final reduction is then performed. Full range of motion is typically allowed with no instability encountered. Again, the anterior incision must be thoroughly inspected to confirm no calcar cracking or fissuring of the proximal femur, which would require cable placement. At this point, the surgical wound is closed in the usual fashion. By following these simple steps, a muscle sparing dual incision total hip arthroplasty with use of surgical navigation can allow you to consistently achieve postoperative radiographic results which will be able to mirror your preoperative surgical templating plan.